Morning gang. So today we're gonna to take you on a little bit of a journey of my daily routine. You would have seen on, on YouTube, or you may not have, that I do a diary of a player uh, which followed me through my rugby career, which followed me through my days off and the bits and pieces I'm doing. Now I am a professional fighter. Try not to laugh, slash DJ. You will have um, hopefully seen as well that we did a few uh, bits of diary pieces uh, about me DJ the other night for uh, the Australia gig, um, raising money for Australia and Amira nightclub. You can uh, use a link with this video to, to watch more of that. So today's interesting, this is kind of how my morning starts. Every single day, my beautiful wife's off camera, um, fiddling, doing admin for me. Um, I'm kind of, every morning's a bit rushed. Obviously, nutrition is so important to everything I'm doing. You know, I'm about 118 kgs at the moment. I came out of the jungle uh, and went down to 110. I was 122 when I went in, so I lost 12 kgs. I'm training five times a week at London Shoot Fires, who we're gonna take you to uh, see today and some of the highlights of training. Every single day is, is, a, is a massive slog at the moment in terms of my nutrition, my health, my recovery. So I'm smashing my protein oats, I've got my coffee, I've got my laptop, I'm trying to multitask, doing a lot of things very badly. Um, if it wasn't for Chloe, I probably wouldn't get up in, uh, properly in the morning. She sort of runs around in the backdrop, making all the food, getting everything ready. Two liters of water, looks like I'm drinking some sort of foam or washing up liquid. No, BCAAs because um, again, hydration and I'm trying to repair my body. So we're gonna take you on a journey. Jack, a wonderful cameraman who's just started with us, is gonna be following up my journey all throughout the day. So you'll see exactly what we get up to. Uh, we're not gonna put any recovery in today. Uh, you'll see my nutrition stuff, but that's for a, another video. So stay tuned and I'll catch you soon. Problem is that when you're, when you're training all the time, the, the bit between being wanting to get all your sleep in and be organized and try and do everything else at the same time and make sure you eat your five and a half thousand calories a day is absolutely kind. Bit of a nightmare. And I spend my life in my car. It's beginning to resemble a public toilet on wheels, but never mind. This is literally where I spend 90% of my life. And trying to trying to be a uh, professional fighter, it's based in London while I'm living in Northampton, is really testing me at the moment. Um, obviously, I wanted to. I need to get a, try and get a place down there, but I love living down here it's quite quiet but it's just an hour and 40 minutes every single day which is really quite stressful um you know hour and 40 minutes one way you're down there for two and a half hours then if you've got any of the djing any of the work stuff you're then coming back about 11 o'clock it's another hour and 40 minutes or wherever you are and you go again the next day so it's a bit hard on the old body but uh it's not too bad oh, i'll tell this lady here but this is what i mean busy parcels it's just there. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. See you, man. Yeah, just getting sending my CBD oil down to my gym in Bath because all the people down there are doing the new eight-week challenge. So if you want to get your rig in shape, this wasn't meant to be an advertisement, but you can uh, <laughs> you can uh, check it out. It's called Impact CBD. Um, they're all going to be using that for trial. So I've got packages coming. My wife's flying out the door. It's all go at this time, and it's, it's 10:31. So I had a bit of a sleeping, but I need to start waking up earlier to get stuff done. But if you wake up early, you're not getting your sleep. It's a vicious cycle, but anyway, we'll crack on. There's always a bit of chaos trying to get out of the house in the morning. Um, we're trying to do too much stuff, trying to eat, but we managed to get out the door and on the road. Been in the car probably just over an hour now, 40 minutes um, to go. The beauty of living up in Northampton and trying to get down to London is you have to go via the M1, which appears to be a road where nobody can drive on as everybody crashes every five minutes. So I'm currently now cross country on the M40. Um, but that's kind of my life, sitting in the, in the car, trying to stay hydrated. Well, actually, as we saw in the DJ gig, in between wee stops, <laughs> when you drink two litres in the morning, very often it's a race against time when you're going to have to stop and go for a, for a wee, but that's part and parcel of being a professional. Um, yesterday was an interesting day. Uh, we kind of went light in, in training-wise, did some pads. Derek Chisora was in. It's always good to see him. He's absolutely smashing it for his, uh, for his next fight. He was in the gym. Um, did some light pads and then I did uh, some jiu-jitsu work, things of side control, getting out of half guard, um, and a lot of technique with, with Michael Shipman, who uh, is fighting Bellator. We did some stuff together. They went relatively easy, which means I think today is going to be a pretty naughty day. Uh, and then yesterday I went over to the England rugby camp. Uh, I was working for O2 on the new, uh, well, not on their new, but on their O2 inside line. Vernon Kay, the regular presenter, couldn't make it, so they obviously wanted someone who was slightly better looking more well-known and uh, slightly more expensive. So I, I, I answered their call. Um, and I uh, got to interview Ollie Thorley and Ben Earl 
the O2 Inside Line Live, which you will find on uh, their Facebook England Facebook page. I've also shared it on mine, which is at www.facebook.com slash James Haskell, J-H-H-F. Uh, a lot of the videos we do and what we do will get uploaded there. So that was really fun to go into camp. Obviously not a great result after the France game, but uh, you know I think everybody knows how much what hard work they've got to do. It was good to see the players to catch up with Owen and Elliot Daly and, and Lewis Ludlum and Ellis Genge. Um, and get to be in camp for a little bit, say hello to the to the main man, Eddie Jones. I sort of went home and had quite a nice night last night. You know, I don't get many early nights at the moment um, because I'm doing a lot of work outside of fighting. So we're doing the DJing video you will have seen on, on YouTube. You can find it with a link uh, on my Omira gig. I was DJing Loughborough last week as well. I had the NTAs, I was speaking at a dinner. So it's been pretty flat out. Um, but luckily the first few bits of this week are quite, quite calm. So we're going on the way down to the gym today. London Shoot Fight is in Wembley. Um, it's a very intense place. I've signed uh, a deal with Bellator to fight. So I've gone from professional rugby player to professional fighter. I don't know if you call myself a professional fighter yet if I haven't had any professional fight, but we're gonna roll with it. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's pretty intense down there. Obviously very different than what I've ever done. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done. You know, in rugby you had to peak uh, on the weekends. And yes, you'd have tough sessions in the week, but nothing like, uh, the way we're you know we're, we're we're training here you know every single day you're asked to peak uh, every day you know the day after you feel like you've, you've played the game i'm focusing so much on recovery ice bath sauna hydration nutrition supplementation everything to get me through this this just training i have already had 18 and a half years uh, 18 and a half seasons as a professional rugby player so uh you know my body is already slightly battered um but i am enjoying it you know things like first spa are really kind of nerve-wracking um, you know and every day you're asked to kind of peak so today there could be potentially some sparring some stuff you guys won't be allowed to see some stuff you may be able to see um, and then basically from there we're going to focus on my nutrition post training uh, or shower up we're heading over to High Road House in Chiswick where I've got an interview with The Guardian they want to do a piece on the fighting stuff we're going to meet with the media guys from Bellator and then we're going to have a long journey back home and then hopefully potentially another early night uh, and then a day off tomorrow to kind of rest and recover. Um, it's very, really intense. I'm going to hopefully let you all have an insight into what I'm doing and, and see the kind of different chapters of my life, whether that's DJing, speaking, um, training, fighting, um, a bit of home life as well, a bit of time with, with my wonderful wife, Chloe. She's paying me to say that, by the way. Um, and see the kind of interactions and stuff we have. So that's what these videos are going to be a little bit about. So if you like them, you can subscribe and, and share. Um, but there's lots more to come, so stay tuned. Lots of debate, James, at the moment about six, seven, eight, and you know you've got experience of all three. It's interesting. Eddie's taken a particular line about not going down the, if you like, the specialist age. Is this something that has evolved in recent years? Do you feel that there's, you, you don't have definite seven, eight, and sixes, or do you believe you still have can have specialists? Um, look, I, I think what was very interesting, the, the, the very, you know, before the very first Scotland game that I played against, uh, sorry, played against Scotland for uh, with Eddie. You know, the week preceding, he called me up and he said, um, and he said, Haska, I want you to play number seven for me. Uh, I want you to go and I want you to carry hard and hit people. Um, I don't want you to worry too much about the breakdown. So obviously, the squad announced the first game came. I was announced at seven. Everybody, you know, was like, well, he's not a seven. He's not a seven. Even though I played a lot at seven for for Was and for Stade Francais and and whatever. Uh, people would, because I didn't look like a seven, um, and you know I was, uh, you know I was okay over the ball, but I wasn't perhaps as good as others. You know I said I went to Eddie and I said, um, you know what do you think of you know what people are saying? Do I need to do more work? And he was like, <laughs> in no uncertain terms, he was like, mate, fucking don't worry about what the press say. Don't worry about what people say. You know what I want you to do? Go and do it. So that's <laughs> that's Chris Jones from the Evening Standard. Uh, I, I don't even, not even involved in rugby, and I get a little message from journalists sometimes just saying look you know watch your comments that was all about the England back row so no doubt people are watching this going what the hell is he talking about uh, and for those rugby noises who don't really care you can just fast forward through that part of the video but um, yeah it's just interesting to see again I'm in the car just a little bit of diversity uh, is he a fighter is he a rugby commentator is he a DJ or is he a dickhead probably more of a dickhead here in beautiful Wembley as you can see some interesting sights and sounds oh my current life. Just over an hour and 40 minutes, we're a little bit late for physio. Um, but it's not, not ideal, but you've got to deal with it, you can't. I need to get it done, but I've got to eat, got to sleep. And 
obviously normally traffic is slightly easier. You'd have to swap over the three motorways, but here we are at the wonderful London Shoe Fighters. So I haven't told you about the characters in the gym. There's a guy, there's a guy who lives in a van who is an unbelievable fighter, Felix from Germany. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> like, there's so many cool people here, mate. Honestly, I can't wait to reintroduce you to you. Felix is a badass fighter, so I can't be too hard on him because he will fill me in. This is London Shoe Fighters in all of its glory. It's quite quiet now because the uh, some guys will be trained and some guys haven't. Yeah, I'll give you an interview later. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> Everybody in here wants to be famous. It's, like, it's, very, it's the secret room. It's the man that puts them together every day. <laughs> Three, two, one. We're um, creating a negative vacuum, which is helping to stretch tissue. Stretching the tissue allows better movement of the muscle fibers. There's more uh, gliding ability. Via the negative vacuum, we're also increasing space underneath the tissue layer where the muscle is, drawing out any stagnant blood. So any stagnation from training being brought to the surface. Because we're removing that stagnation, we're allowed in, allowing extra uh, room in the muscle for fresh blood, which is oxygen rich, nutrient rich, which helps heal the area quicker, relaxes muscles more. What we're doing is bringing all that bruising, all that swelling into the lymph that's sitting in the armpit here. And your body's gonna be able to flush it out there. <laughs> oh shit! Ah. Oh. This one. Oh. This is like I spent my last <laughs> twenty years basically getting physio from various people, and it's just a complete, <laughs> just pain, but love, pain and love all in one. Paul's a maestro. Oh. God. Oh. Honestly, sometimes I just need to go to a place and put some whale music on and light a candle and just have a bit of relaxation. I need a relaxation for the relaxation. <laughs> Tuesday at London Shoot Fighters. Um, it's a pretty mentally tough day today. Sparring, uh, rolling, technique, um, cardio, it's horrific. Um, now I've got to focus on recovery. I've got to go and do a couple of interviews now. Um, but as you can see, like from what you're allowed to see on this video and the stuff you probably weren't going to see, um, it's big characters, a lot of hard work goes on. Um, it's a completely different world, this fight game, than than I've ever done, you know, it's pretty non-stop. You should get that from the kind of the way the video's gone, that you see it's pretty pretty impactful as I can't start and then you get fully into it. I'm absolutely hanging now. Um, I've changed t-shirts, I've sweated so much, I've got to hydrate, I've got to eat some food, and then I've got to go off and then get a meeting now. Um, 
be interviewed and then uh, normally might be going to speak at a dinner or doing a DJ gig. So luckily I'm going to go home. But I'm shattered, that's what I've got. Finished training. Um, absolutely shattered. You would have seen the physio I had and they put me back together and now I'm limping like my ankle's made of wood. Um, but that's all part and parcel of the training. Off to High Road House now for a meeting with The Guardian. I'm going to do an article and with Bellator about all the media and PR. Going to get a bit of food. And we're back in the car, back up to, to Northampton. Uh, got my trusty ice pack with me, which is not particularly cool. As my elbow is literally about to fall off, which is not ideal. But uh, can't film inside, so I'll catch you later. I mean, I've just got home. It's 8.23. I'm shattered. Uh, it's been a hell of a day. We started at about eight o'clock this morning. Um, we have sparred, we've jiu-jitsu rolled, we've wrestled, we've been interviewed, we've driven uh, about two and a half hours, uh, no, four and a half hours. Um, and now I put my feet up, I'm gonna watch some TV. My beautiful wife's gonna look after me and I'm probably gonna fall asleep and then go to bed early and have a bit of a lie-in tomorrow. But you know what? I've got someone coming around to do a blood test for my nutrition, so there's never any rest for the wicked, and we've got a House of Rugby live show, but I'm done, you're done, get out.